it's Erin with Time Saving Templates, and today I'm going to be going over a question that we get from time to time, which is related to a couple of our templates that are pay for performance related templates. We, we have the merit increase template and we also have the variable compensation bonus template. And they both have features where you can recommend increases or bonuses based on the employee's performance ratings. If you are grouping a lot of employees together in one file and you want to utilize their performance ratings to provide some type of guidance on the recommended increase. So I have another video that goes over an example of how to use this merit worksheet, but you'll see there's a lot of tabs and pages at the bottom and the gray cells are formulas that will update based on information entered in the other tabs and pages. So for this example, we have, we have a merit increase matrix. So I've already filled this out with some sample information. And basically what we're saying is if someone scores a performance review of a five and their salary is within the market range or the salary range, then we're going to recommend that they get a hundred percent of what is budgeted for a merit increase. So if there's a 3% merit increase budget, they would get a hundred percent of that 3%. If they score a four, they're going to get 95, 90, and then a one and a two is going to get 0% whether they're below or above salary range or the market range that we set. And that is explained more in another video. How do you categorize them into those three? So the question that we've been getting is related to the actual performance rating. So depending on what kind of program or system you use for doing the performance reviews, sometimes you get just a bunch of different numeric values. So if you can have a 2.1, a 2.2, a 2.7, 4.5, 4.6, 4 etc. that ends up being a bunch of different possibilities for what the actual performance rating could be. But in order to utilize the uh, increase matrix, we need to get those ratings down. In here, I just have five uh, ratings recommendations. We have about a space for 20 different ratings. So in order for this to work, what we have here in the rating needs to match to what we enter here in this column. You can label it whatever you want it to be. It just needs to match. So I've pasted in an extra chart that I actually stole from another template, the performance review template, which I can also show you how that works. But skipping over to the performance review template, because this is kind of what we're trying to do. We're calculating a proposed performance rating, and then we're adding it to this formula is adding it to the specific cat rating category. And that's based on what we entered here. And so that's why I just copied and pasted this chart into our merit page. So if you're starting completely from scratch on performance reviews and performance ratings. This is also a really good template to start out with the performance review template where you can have a different page for each employee and you can go ahead and set up the merit, the metrics, the weights per metric and get that final rating. But going back to the merit. So I've already uh, pasted this chart in and basically what we're saying here is if someone scores between a 1 and a 1.99, we're going to label that unsatisfactory. If they score between a 4.6 and a 5.25, say, or whatever max number you want to put, that exceeds expectations. So we can end up using these type of labels, or we could just put, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we need to know that if it's a 2.5, it should be slotted to a three or proficient. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use what we have here. So here we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to just the numbers. So it's, it has to match exactly. And then from here, there's two different ways we can do this. I'm going to show you the first way, which is going to be a formula looking at this chart. And it's going to tell me if the rating falls between these two numbers, then label it as a two or a three. It's going to be with the VLOOKUP formula. So I do have other videos 
that go into the basics of VLOOKUP if you haven't used this formula before. Basically, we're going to be looking at the lookup value, their performance rating. The table is going to be over here. So we're looking at the low, and then we want to pull in the label. So we're going to highlight all three. And if you see that times three at the top, that also tells us that it's the third column, or you can count one, two, three. That's just, uh, we need to enter that for the column index so it knows which column we're wanting to pull in when that number matches. For the range lookup, usually I'm always recommending to use false, which would give us an exact match. But for this example, we're gonna enter true because we're trying to find numbers in between. So it's not gonna be an exact match. Okay, and then just drag it down and you'll see that it is slotting for the 4.8, we're slotting that into a five. For the 3.7, we're slotting that into the four. Okay, so now that we have that, it should be populating with our recommended merit percentage. So it's pulling in the proposed performance rating category, which can then let us know it's referencing this chart now to pull in the correct budget percentage. Of course, we have it set up so that's just the recommended. You can still go in and change the percentage of the budget that you want that person to get. Okay, so that's the first way to do it. And the second way, if you wanted, say you didn't want that 3.5 to count as a four, if you just want the first number to count, so a 3.7 counts as a three, a 4.8 counts as a four, there's also another formula we can use here. It's called equals left. And then I'm gonna do the, the C, click on the performance rating, comma, and I'm gonna enter one. That's just, and then and close. That's just gonna give me the first number to the left. So there, it will just give me uh, one number. Even though we have this long decimal, it can just give me the one number. And then if I paste these employee numbers into, into here, we also have to paste the salary grade if we want the range to calculate and just paste some salary information. You'll see now it's populating with the recommended increase is gonna be zero for the ones and twos and then 90% for the three and the four. So that is something to review. If you want a 3.7, do you want it counting as a four or do you want it counting as a three? If you want it just counting as a three, you can use that equals left formula if you want to have a specific set ranges, you could also use this VLOOKUP formula with the TRUE at the end and pull it in that way. So that's how you get around. You have a bunch of different numeric values for the performance rating and you need to categorize them so you can better use the pay for performance features in our merit template and the variable comp template has this too. So you can find both of the templates, the merit increase, the variable comp, or the performance review template all by going to timesavingtemplates.com and just click on the shop in the human resources tab and you'll find all the templates there. We are working on a package that will have all of them together. So I'll be posting that when we have it ready. But for now, you can find each individual template in this section. And we also have some free resources. If you want to grab a free template or a free cheat sheet, have a compensation metrics cheat sheet, you can get some other free templates for small business and rental property, as well as a free guide to getting started with Excel. So you can find that there at timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources. Until next time, don't forget that I'm here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to using Excel spreadsheets in your HR department or your small business. And if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time.